I, I don't know if it's going to be high. It'll be important <laughs> and it'll be relevant. Um, I'm not going to apologize for this poem. Um, but it is a hard poem for me to get through. And I think that the only preamble that maybe is relevant here is that in talking about Dr. King, um, it calls up the movement that he is associated with. And there was a young man that sometimes is named as catalyzing that movement. And he died when he was 14. His name was Emmett Till. So this poem is for him. Southern tree, bear a strain, food, blood only, and blood at the root, black body. into swollen limbs, his eyes are still hazel and recognizable. Two neat white rows of perfect teeth sit totem-like in his mouth, and the world did not know him because he had not been murdered yet. He's still slipping into the kitchen to get another piece of cornbread while his mama ain't looking. He'll mash it with his fingers, drink some buttermilk, and laugh with his eyes, and they are still hazel and bright like stars in uppercase. And ain't nobody gouged him out or shut him closed. And when he goes to school, he'll do a silly little dance with his arms and legs cocked out in odd angles and his classmates are gonna laugh and there will be no cotton gin tied around his waist. Pastoral scenes of the gallant south. The bulging eyes and the twisted mouth, sin of magnolia, sweet and fresh. Then the sudden smell of now, in this photo, he's proud of the hat on his head. You can see that by how straight his neck is. And his mama's in the picture, and they got the same face. And his head is high and perfect. It ain't no bullet in it. It will be months before there is one. And in those months, he is his mother's child. The smug and overfed man child all Southern ladies love to cook for. Because he licks the plate clean, even if it's leftovers. He just eats and yes, ma'ams. It makes you giggle so much you got to shoo him out the kitchen just so you can get the pots clean. And he's breathing. And he's whole. And ain't no men dressed like midnight with sunless, unlaughing eyes snatching him out the door, changing everything when neither of them asked to be anything other than laughing in the kitchen with the greens still simmering in the pot. Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rise, for the trees to dry. This last photo is a holocaust. 
See, it's the one that history concretized into the nighttime musings of black children who hopscotched above and below Bible Belt, who saw a tattered otherworldly version of the 14-year-old Emmett Till, head poised strangely above a sharp black suit on the cover of Jet Magazine. There were no eyes, smiling, mischievous man-child, wonderful cornbread and buttermilk slicking, fast talking, looking like his mama, straight necked full of tomorrow's boy, staring back into the camera. What was there was not there at all. What was there swallowed the world. My mama was eight years old. When they painted Emmett Till's fractured image on the cover of a Negro magazine, eight years old, pigtails, pinafores, pleats, and a heap of pretty girl possibilities. And I know my grandmother set that book down with intention on the coffee table, knowing my mama would see it and then know what should not be known, but what must be known. This is what the South did with an adolescent mistake. When a fast-talking, finger-snapping Negro from up north came down south bragging about big city white girl honeys with rosy lips and no Jim Crow, it is an image I have shoved at my 14-year-old son. Frenetic in my attempt to tell him that this is black history, I need him to know that if he's not careful, not brave, not the sum total of all our unlit courage, if he relegates these stories to cliff notes, he bleeds out and dies in the epilogue. I need you to know, Sally, that my arms are never going to be wide enough to cover sins like these, that your head held so high it's still a cautionary tale, but go on and do it anyway, son. Go on and do it anyway, and laugh and dance with your arms and legs cocked out in odd angles, and slip by me and get the extra cornbread whenever you can, and be grateful that when you and your friends say something slick about the pretty blonde girl in the front row of algebra, you are permitted that levity after 400 years of midnights, next decorated in nooses, plantations that dressed up terrorism in white lace gloves and mint juleps. I tell my son to remember Emmett Till, to remember when his eyes were still smiling, still hazel, to remember how high he held his head to celebrate that new hat. I tell my son to remember that Emmett's mother loved him and almost could not recognize him when that last whistle left his throat. I tell my son that I will be his mother all the days of my life, that I will celebrate his brown boy buoyancy. And while I do not know what tomorrow will hold, I know he will never be strange fruit, will never be broken open, will never be strung up, will never be hog tied, will never have his face so like my own, crushed, hatcheted, or mangled. I tell my son. I'm growing these limbs for you, Sully, mm. to get around you yeah. and surround you. And we will be strong and unapologetically black right. for as long yeah. as we can. Yeah.